Hey again, and welcome to the Asus Rampage 6 Extreme Motherboard Review. Could this be the best motherboard ever made? So, there it is. And without all the lights on, it does look very different. Now you do need to remember that you can disable all the lights, but you do have this two-way mirror effect going on. Now I do know that people seem to get annoyed about RGB, and I know it's not for everyone, but it is a feature on the boards that we cover with all of them. But I think they've gone a little bit of a step further with this in the fact that they have made it very different depending on whether you run the lights on or off because you could turn them off and you just get this lovely kind of satin effect, you know, semi kind of mirror. But then when you flick it, the lights on, it's totally different. Again, you've got these lovely patterns that come through the mirrored effect. And uh, I've got them on the cycling at the moment so that you can just see all the different colors and where all the lighting uh, points are, but you could obviously change them for a single color if you want, and you can also set up your own customized um, animations as well if you want to cycle through two colors of your choice or you know whatever. So you do get a lot of options there. But then this is also, and I have seen some of the other um, LCDs on the boards that Asus have done, where you get the little PCI poster. And I have to admit, they, I didn't think that they were, they looked nice, but on the poster, you would have only have just been getting CPU, GPU, hard drive. This is the first time I've seen the actual full post readout as well. And it worked flawlessly without any glitches, no little hangs in it or anything whatsoever. And then when it's finished, it just goes to the, uh, um, the temperature of your CPU on the desktop, and this did match the results that I was getting in the operating system as well. But you can set it to put your own text on there, your own logo, anything. And I, I, I genuinely, the, the aesthetics of this board, I absolutely love. To skim through some of the um, basics though, you've got a start and a reset in the top right hand corner. Then you've got your retry button and a safe boot, that's the red and the white. Just to the left of that, you've got those dip switches. The dip switches are so that you can turn the PCI Express lanes off and they're the GPU slots. That's, uh, if I've say it in every video, but that's just in case you've got a couple of graphics cards with dry ice, LN2 or water, and one of them fails, it would stop the system from posting. With those little switches, you can flick them off, completely disables the lane, and it's like it's not even there, and your system will then magically post again. You can also see the M.2 mount here. Now, it's not the only M.2 mount, but you've got, it's their own kind of, you can fit two M.2s on that. There is another one underneath, hidden underneath here, but that's one that, oh, tripod's moving. Uh, so that's just one that you can mount a fan to if you want, and you can have the fan like a diamond, or you can have it over the, you know, half the board if you want. It's also got RGBs on it. You can disable those if you want as well though, and just have it totally um, static. You don't even have to put that there. If you don't want to, you can use the one further down on the board. So there's lots and lots of options for you there. MOSFET cooling has been a big issue with the X299 boards uh, and not because they're faulty or running out of spec or anything like that. It's just because when you put, um, you know, four or five hundred watts worth of power through the MOSFETs, they can get warm and you have to create adequate cooling. So there is, have a look, a little heat pipe. But unlike the Apex, because the Apex had a giant metal heat sink, this is all plastic and it did make me worry when i saw that it was completely enclosed and there's not really any vents out the back or anything i was like oh this probably isn't going to work that well so here's the graph 
it did work significantly better than I was expecting. On the 26.6, it did uh, better than the Apex, but it was a degree or two in front of the Apex when we cranked up the heat and put the AVX um, instructions in and we used 28.1 or 29.2 because a lot of people don't seem to realize that there is more than one version of Prime and the, the, the different versions put totally different levels of load onto your system. So when we say all that out loud, and even though it's enclosed, it still performed better than pretty much every other board that I've tested, just goes to show quite how well this damn thing's designed. You do get a water cooling zone down in the bottom right hand corner. You've got the little headers popping up here. You've got the extra fan um, header card, which does come in the box. Um, there are a splattering of um, uh, fan headers around the board. There's another one just there. There is actually one hidden just in there. If you look closely, you can see the four little pins just up there. Right up in this top right hand corner, if you have a look at where those pins are, just there, you can see the bit that I mean. It's just kind of nestling there. That is your water block header and that's a proprietary connector that Asus have designed so that if you were to go and buy an aftermarket block, full cover block, which would cool the CPU and the MOSFET, you can plug your header in there and then that opens up to companies like Bits Power and EK that they can have flow sensors in there if they want, temperature sensors in there if they want, leak sensors in there if they want. So they're actually starting to build these things into the boards themselves now, but we're kind of moving away from the point that I wanted to talk to you about fan headers and there are a couple of them up there. That's your CPU and CPU um, optional fan header there. And then I'm pretty sure there is another one. Yeah, there is just another one, just hiding, just underneath there. You can see it just down the bottom, just there. And that's your, the last of your fan headers. Now, I did think that that wasn't a massive amount of them, but you have got the extra card, which gives you another four out the back, and you can get PWM splitters. You do also get your uh, RGB out, just here but this one just over here because i've had a few people getting con confused this is only a three pin and that's an addressable rgb so that's where you get the little chasing effects and all that sort of stuff that matches up with the lighting that i showed you on the board previously you've got the supreme fx audio down the the side here again that back plate is also totally built in i've not fit an io shield or anything at all you can actually see that i've got the the back of the case off at the moment but you get dual gigabit ethernet going on around the back sorry you get um gigabit ethernet and a 10g built in uh slot on this now people do seem to say quite a lot does that will that make my internet faster no it's only your internal network at home so it's got nothing to do with the internet outside of your house it's just what's connected inside your house if you did want to connect this up to another pc then you would need either uh, another 10g port on the other pc uh, and if you wanted to run stuff through a switch as well you'd need a 10g switch uh, asus do actually make a 10g switch because my main pc my home server uh, all goes through an Asus 10G switch and I get 1.1 gigabits a second across my network. So yes, um, up from 119 megabits a second and I'm now running uh, yeah 1.1 gigabits a second. Other than that, you've got a BIOS clear switch here, then you've got BIOS flashback, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, loads of um, USB 3s. Keybot round the back, USB Type-C, gold connectors for your audio. The audio connectors also light up a specific colour, so you don't have to go hunting. You'll be able to see that you know the um, the normal one will light up green and all. It, it they've covered pretty much every base. Do you know what? I'm not even going to mess around that much. I do need to talk to you about overclocking though, and. <sighs> Annoyingly, it made my life really easy. The only thing that it didn't do when in direct comparison with the Apex. Now the Apex has only got four memory slots. This has got eight. 
with the Apex that it's only got those four because at the end of the day, it's designed to make your memory life a bit easier. So with the Apex, I did manage to get 3600 megahertz running with 3200 megahertz of cache. With this, I could get 3600 megahertz running and I could get that 3200 megahertz of cache running as well, annoyingly. And I could get it with the same clocks as the Apex as well. But what I did notice is I did manage to, rather than with 4.5 gigahertz, which I was able to get on the Apex, and the Apex, no matter what I did, even if I was running stock memory, I couldn't get 4.6 gigahertz stable. This, however, at 1.225 volts, I could get almost everything stable. And the only thing I couldn't get to pass was Blender. And with Blender, we've got a 1080 run and a 4K run. And the 4K run takes 20 minutes and it absolutely smashes the back end off of anything. So it needed 1.25 volts to run Blender and pass absolutely everything. But it did mean that I could only get 3200 megahertz running with 3000 megahertz of cache. Now say 3000 megahertz, that's still up from uh, 3700. So I'm gonna start with the uh, memory graph because it's the worst one. Now, when I saw this, I was thinking sub memory timing. So I tried different memory. I tried flashing, um, not tried flashing bars, tried completely cleaning the BIOS and starting again from scratch in case it hadn't kind of tied the memory timings down. I did this in between changing the memory as well. And I tried several different types of memory and I still got the iffy results. So this is the worst graph of them all. And you also need to remember is with these results, this still then gave us the results for all of the other tests. But then again, we were running 4.6 gigahertz of 3200 megahertz of memory. And I do think that the, the memory graph is just down to some slightly slack sub timings that I might have to have plumbed in manually, or they might end up sorting out in a, a later BIOS. It didn't do that badly, but then when you think about the other X299 boards that we've done, it did sit at the bottom of the graph. But I've started with the worst on purpose because everything else is golden. Absolutely golden. And I'm just going to smash through them because I'm not even going to bother talking about them that much. X265, top. Don't forget you can pause. Blender, top. 3D Mark, top. Gaming, yeah, not quite top, but not far off. And I genuinely think that um, if you look at some of these results, they are quicker than the Apex. And it's only really um, the, the CPU bound result, which I'm still not quite sure about because the Apex was at a lower clock. So maybe it was something to do with the Gears one, but anyway, we're just gonna carry on. Cinebent absolutely blasted that as well. So for the most part, most of the games are absolutely blinding and it was only the, the Gears CPU benchmark that really pulled it back from being the, the top of that graph. It could have been that the Apex result was a bit balked, but I, I, when I saw it came out, it consistently did it afterwards. But anyway, so I have to be totally clear with you, I was not expecting this to clock better than the Apex. It just, it wasn't meant to happen that way. The Apex, is the balls out overclocking board. And I still say, if you're gonna go sub-zero and really go balls to the wall, the Apex will be the one that you want, especially if you are gonna drag those temperatures right back. And then the other real reason for the Apex is going to be the fact it's got all the nice cutouts and it does stand out as being a little bit different in that regard. But when it comes to this, that kind of two-way mirror-y kind of effect on it, does make it look the absolute nuts. And I did worry with a new kind of apex in the range that it meant that the Rampage wasn't really gonna get a chance, maybe not a chance to shine, but it was going to lose some of its shine that it's earned over all these years. Results went totally different. The results, I was absolutely gobsmacked and I genuinely cannot express how easy this thing was to work with. Now, yes, I've done a lot of X299 stuff, so I have got used to it, but it literally, I had it running at 4.5 gigahertz within three boots in about 15 minutes. And then once I then pushed that little bit further, within half an hour, I had um, Blender running, uh, and I mean Blender running stable within 30 minutes of even starting the overclocks. 
I then moved on to the memory and was focusing on the memory and I couldn't get everything to play in ball at the same time. So what I ended up doing for the results was just choosing to go with slightly lower memory because it's only really one of the graphs, but then going with the slightly higher CPU. Now, I did try and do the lower memory with the, um, a higher clock on the Apex and it just wasn't having it. Might have been the fact that it was an earlier BIOS and we've had another BIOS revision on this one since. But at the end of the day, I'm absolutely gobsmacked that the Rampage still managed to pull it back. So the granddaddy of like the, you know, the highlight of the, or the flagship or whatever you want to call it, still managed to hold its own against the new boy on the block, which was the Apex. And to be honest with you, I, I really like this board. Now, I didn't think when I saw the pictures I was going to like all these lights. And I understand there are a lot of you that still don't like lights and won't like lights. But you can see that they've really pushed boundaries with this board and the design. Now, I don't care what you may think. That can't be cheap to do. That genuinely can't be cheap to do. But it looks the nads I love it and the fact that you can turn them off and it's not just plain and simple and you've still got that mirrory bit going on which is why it's at this angle so that you can see it reflecting if you put a white light at the bottom of the system it just what you end up doing is you get the if you put a white light in your system you get kind of like a faint trail of what you could see the lights behind before but you don't get any of the lighting with it it's it's an incredibly special finish but anyway Long and short of it is, and I can't believe I'm going to say this because I genuinely haven't used this for any motherboards yet. Now, I'm not doing this because it's um, uh, on an Intel platform. I'm doing this based on the board. It could have a Threadripper chip in it, and I would say the exact same thing. And to be honest with you, if the Zenith looked like this and performed like this compared to the other boards, I'd be saying the same thing as well. But this, it's... It's the OC3D Ultimate Award. Now that's our kind of new version of white gold and I genuinely do not give this award out very often and it comes with exceptional, exceptional praise because I genuinely, like I said, I do not use this board very uh, this award very often and I will not use this board very often as well. But I would go as far as to say, as saying the Rampage 6 is probably one of if not quite probably the best Asus board they have ever made. Because they're short of that memory thing, which I'm absolutely certain will get fixed with a BIOS update because it can't be anything like massively like faulty with it. It's just going to be um, ever so ever so slight uh, tweakings on those sub timings. It's, and it still managed to claw to the top of the graphs in every, pretty much everything. It's an absolute masterstroke. So you copy up the, put in the performance, the aesthetics, the 10G Ethernet, the ease of the, um, the ease of the overclocking, the fact that the, even though they covered up that secondary heatsink, it still performed better than pretty much every other X299 board out there. It's epic. And I have no more to say about it it is genuinely awesome. Can I have a white one?